In this video, we're talking about the basics of IAQ, or indoor air quality, both for HVAC technicians and contractors, as well as homeowners. Indoor air quality, or IAQ, is crucial for maintaining a healthy living environment. Understanding and controlling common indoor pollutants can help reduce the risk of negative health outcomes. This video walks through the essential IAQ components, highlighting key pollutants, their sources, and effective mitigation strategies. Indoor air can contain a variety of pollutants that affect health and comfort. The primary indoor air pollutants include particulate matter, or PM, volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, humidity, which in and of itself is not a pollutant, but can increase the effects of certain pollutants and can cause some respiratory challenges, carbon monoxide, or CO, carbon dioxide, or CO2, ozone, otherwise known as O3, and radon. These pollutants tend to concentrate in tightly sealed indoor environments that don't have proper ventilation. Particulate matter, PM2.5 and PM10. Dust and particles you can easily see can be irritating, but the real health hazards are the ones that you often cannot see. PM2.5 refers to particulate matter smaller than 2.5 microns, while PM10 refers to particles smaller than 10 microns. PM2.5 is particularly harmful due to its ability to penetrate deep into the lungs and potentially enter the bloodstream. Exposure to particulate matter can cause respiratory issues, cardiovascular problems, and exacerbate asthma. Common sources include things like vehicle exhaust, industrial emissions, cooking, and tobacco smoke. The EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, recommends using high-efficiency filters of MERV-13 or higher to trap PM2.5 and PM10 particles. Higher MERV ratings means that it captures smaller particles more effectively. Because of this, we advise looking at quality whole home four inch or thicker filters, in addition to room DIY or store bought filters, and even bypass HEPA filtration. We do not recommend one inch filters of MERV 13 or higher because they generally cause too much airflow restriction and can cause challenges with the HVAC equipment. Volatile Organic Compounds, or VOCs VOCs are organic chemicals that evaporate at room temperature, contributing to indoor air pollution. Exposure to VOCs and the health outcomes vary greatly depending on the chemical we're talking about. Short-term exposure can cause headaches, dizziness, and irritation of the eyes, nose, and throat. Long-term exposure may lead to liver, kidney, or central nervous system damage. VOCs are often emitted from products like paints, cleaning supplies, pesticides, building materials, and office equipment, and even things such as odor diffusers and various plug-in devices that can emit scents. The EPA advises using products with low VOC emissions and increasing ventilation when using products that release VOCs. Pay special attention to things like bedding and pillows and notice any chemical or abnormal odors. If you can smell it, it usually is a VOC. Humidity control. High humidity levels can encourage mold growth, dust mites, and other microbial proliferation. This can cause an increase in allergies and respiratory issues. Low humidity can dry out mucous membranes, increasing susceptibility to respiratory infections and irritations. The ideal indoor humidity range is between 35 and 60% relative humidity. High humidity levels can increase the off-gassing of VOCs.
we suggest using whole home dehumidifiers like Santa Fe in humid climates and whole home humidifiers in dry climates, properly installed by a professional in conjunction with the existing HVAC equipment. Carbon monoxide, or CO. Carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless gas produced by burning fuels with an imperfect mixture of fuel to air. High levels of carbon monoxide can cause headaches, dizziness, weakness, and even death. Common sources include unvented gas or kerosene space heaters, leaking chimneys and furnaces, and gas stoves. Ensure proper venting for appliances and install CO detectors to monitor levels. We advise low-level CO monitors like Defender in addition to standard code require models. Also, all fuel-burning appliances should be checked regularly by a professional, ideally with a combustion analysis. Carbon dioxide, or CO2. CO2 is not a pollutant in and of itself. CO2 is a natural component of air but elevated levels of indoor CO2 can indicate poor ventilation and can cause symptoms. High CO2 levels can cause drowsiness, headaches, and impaired concentration. Major sources of CO2 include human respiration and combustion or fuel-burning appliances. The EPA advises increasing ventilation to reduce indoor CO2 concentrations when concentrations are elevated. Ozone, or O3. Ozone is a highly reactive gas that can be harmful to human health. Short-term exposure can cause respiratory issues, while long-term exposure may lead to chronic respiratory diseases. Indoor sources include some air purifiers and other electronic devices such as copy machines. EPA recommends using air purifiers that do not produce ozone and to maintain proper ventilation indoors. The conversation surrounding ozone becomes especially important when using common add-on components that are purported to improve indoor air quality. Many of these components do produce ozone and in turn can cause more respiratory issues than they solve. Radon. Radon is a naturally occurring radioactive gas that can seep into homes from the ground. Radon challenges tend to be regional depending on the underlying geological makeup underneath the home. Often homes that are built on granite tend to have more issues with radon, but there are other types of underlying geographies that can lead to radon. Long-term exposure to radon gas has been shown to cause lung cancer. Radon typically enters homes through cracks in the foundation, floors, and walls. The EPA recommends testing homes for radon and using mitigation systems such as sub-slab depressurization to reduce radon levels. Effective indoor air quality management evolves addressing source control, pathways, filtration, ventilation, and humidity. Source control. Avoid using products that emit VOCs. Ensure combustion appliances are properly installed and vented and test for gases such as radon and carbon monoxide to make sure they're at safe levels. Pathways. Sealing gaps and building envelopes to prevent outdoor pollutants from entering and ensuring proper ductwork to avoid cross-contamination within the home. This includes things such as area ventilation in areas that you're doing cooking or if you're doing home projects such as pottery. Work to keep contaminants contained in the area that they're generated and properly ventilated. The EPA recommends maintaining tight building envelopes and using air sealing techniques, as well as proper ventilation and filtration. Filtration. Using high MERV filters, MERV 13 or higher in HVAC systems, and you can also install bypass HEPA filters to capture fine particles. MERV 13 Plus filters can trap smaller particles effectively, while bypass HEPA filters can provide superior filtration for entire homes. The EPA recommends using the highest efficiency filter your HVAC system can handle to improve IAQ. This often includes upgrades and additions of 4-inch plus thick filters so as not to stress the HVAC equipment. Ventilation. Use energy recovery ventilators, or ERVs,
or heat recovery ventilators, HRVs, Or our recommendation in humid climates is to use ventilating dehumidifiers to bring in fresh air while retaining energy efficiency. Balanced ventilation systems like ERVs, HRVs, or slightly positive pressurized systems, such as ventilating dehumidifiers, provide controlled ventilation, ensuring the incoming air is filtered and conditioned before adding it to the indoor space. EPA recommends implementing balanced ventilation systems to maintain consistent air quality through dilution. Humidity control. Using dehumidifiers in humid climates and humidifiers in arid climates to maintain optimal humidity levels is recommended. The EPA and other organizations recommend keeping indoor humidity levels between 35% in dry seasons and below 60% in humid seasons to prevent mold growth and maintain comfort. Now let's talk about DIY solutions and indoor air quality monitors. For homeowners who may not be able to invest in advanced indoor air quality systems, there are affordable do-it-yourself solutions and IAQ monitors available. Consider attaching a high-efficiency filter to a box fan to create a simple and effective air cleaner. Even better, use a cube configuration as shown to make an even more long-lasting and efficient filter. We call this configuration the Comparetto Cube, after my friend Neil Comparetto, who came up with this particular configuration. This method is cost-effective and can significantly improve indoor air quality in a room, even on a budget. IAQ monitors measure various indoor pollutants, providing real-time data. We recommend using IAQ monitors to track the effectiveness of ventilation, filtration, and humidity control methods. One of our favorites is the Induct Haven IAQ monitor, which measures IAQ in the entire home by making the measurement inside the air conditioning ductwork. My friend Jenry Garcia did a case study, along with Santa Fe dehumidifiers, in an older home. Jenry is an HVAC consultant, and he worked on a 1941 ranch-style home with indoor air quality issues. The home had high humidity, temperature fluctuations, and the client had pollutant sensitivities. First, Jenry did a blower door test to reveal significant air leakage into the space from the attic and crawl space. Then he did a zonal pressure diagnostic that identified specific areas of leakage contributing to poor indoor air quality. As solutions, he installed a whole house dehumidifier to control humidity and introduce fresh air. He then replaced the oversized HVAC system with a smaller, more efficient unit and used the integrated ventilating dehumidifier to improve ventilation and indoor air quality. The new system effectively controlled humidity and introduced filtered fresh air, and the homeowners reported improved comfort and reduced pollutant levels, even on an older home. Understanding and improving indoor air quality is crucial for health and comfort. By recognizing common pollutants, implementing effective ventilation and filtration strategies, and controlling humidity levels, HVAC techs and homeowners can significantly enhance indoor air quality. By utilizing DIY solutions in some cases and IAQ monitors such as the Haven IAQ, we can provide affordable options for monitoring and maintaining air quality. Through education and practical application, we can create healthier indoor environments for all. As one final warning, there are some products that are sold that are purported to improve indoor air quality just by bolting on a particular additional component. In some cases, these products may work, but these are no replacement for the fundamentals of IAQ that we taught in this video. For more information, I strongly recommend going to epa.gov slash indoor dash air dash quality dash IAQ. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, hvacrschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. 
We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.